for Platte Valley. And C.J. boots that ball. It's a beautiful spirally pawn that bounces at the 31-yard line, takes a beat digger roll to the 25, then the handoff to Zender running left along the sideline, and he is knocked out of bounds, but not before he gets to around the 50-yard line. And the tackle was made by C.J. Kukas, maybe to the 48, so pretty good return of around 27 yards after Flo fielded it and then handed off to Zender. You know, that reverse always screws you up when you're going down there to defend it, but Rush actually had three guys right there to make the tackle. The bad thing was it was 15 yards before they tackled him. They had a kid, one of our kids had a chance to push him out of bounds, but they went for the tackle instead, and he was able to break the tackle. Platte Valley has all three timeouts. First and 10 for Platte Valley at the brush, 48-yard line. Arnold in the backfield gets the handoff up the middle of the 45, stutter steps to the 40. Before Brandon Rutherford got a piece of him, it's a gain of eight. It'll be second down and a short two. The clock continues to run, but it's not a factor right now because Platte Valley's up to the line of scrimmage. As I mentioned, all three timeouts, a minute 52 to go before the break, and they lead eight to nothing. On second down and two from the 40-yard line, shotgun formation for Smith. He's got the football, takes off towards the left side of the field. He's got a first down, and Rosenbrock tried to strip him but he's tackled after a four-yard game by Tyson Larrick at the 35-yard line. Give him five on the play. They'll stop the clock for the movement of the chains with an even 100 seconds to go before the break. Platte Valley lets the clock roll. First and 10 for the B-Digger at 35. This could be a game-changer if the B-Diggers do not stop the Broncos. In motion to the right is Arnold. And the snap and the handoff right up the gut, and that, I believe, is to float. He's got a short gain or a gain of two. Platte Valley's going to have to call a timeout as Levi Brenneman made the hit. It'll be second. Kyle Muir also in on the play. Second down and around eight. They're letting lots of time roll off. A minute to go in the opening half. Second and eight from the 33. Smith, shotgun, back to throw. No pressure. Looks, throws towards the sideline. Broken up, batted away by Rosenbrock at the 30-yard line. Intended along the sideline by Kyle Monroe, the six foot, 161-pound senior wide receiver. Third down and eight with 54 seconds to go at the B-Digger 33. You know, Smith jumped back. He threw a bullet out there, and Wilsonbrock did a good job, as you saw him kind of dive to the ball and, and knock it out with his right hand and, and put it on the ground. So a big defensive play there by Joe as Platt Valley tried to the, and complete that pass and possibly, you know, save a timeout by getting knocked down. Third and eight from the 33. Arnold is in motion to the right again. Smith has the football. Play action. Back to throw. Pumping. Heaving it down the right sideline. Man is out there. It is caught for a first down inside the 10 to around the six. And it's Marcus Walker. Holy Mahungus. The beat diggers nearly came up with that. And C.J. Kupas was around the football. But instead it's a gain of 27. And the ball, they're going to say it's at the five. And now they've got all three timeouts with 44 seconds to go on that right side of the field. Smith awaiting the snap. Option left. He's going to take off with the football to the two, to the one, and he dives into the end zone. Touchdown. Cut back toward the inside, and Jordan Smith scores with 35 seconds to go in the opening half. Platt Valley leads 14-0. This is a really nice, another really nice pass play by Smith. Both of those good passes have been completed to the right side and they're kind of picking on Kukas over there as Walker was able to get behind him. As CJ closed in on it, the ball had just enough carry to get over his outstretched arm. Well, here's the swinging gate once again. It snapped to Smith, who was the holder, and he runs right up the cut for a touchdown. The two play conversion is good. We'll keep it right here. Platte Valley leads 16 to nothing with 35 seconds to go. And I tell you, I mean, it boils down to the same thing. Turnovers and penalties. The penalty for the safety, the turnover. That the beat diggers gave away to Platte Valley. And uh, and that was a six-play, 48-yard drive in a minute 37. And Jordan Smith with a five-yard run and a two-point conversion. So the beat diggers now are just going to have to sit on the football and take this into halftime. So, Dave, basically what happened in the first quarter last year kind of happened in the second quarter this year, just not on special teams. Right? They just scored fast, and, and uh, 
you know, assertively because when Smith runs the football, it seems like he's kind of on that option. It seems like he's running sideways a long ways, but when he turns turns it upfield, he runs with a lot of power, and the diggers are just having a hard time even putting a shoulder pad on him, and they reach out with their arms to make the tackle, but the arm tackles aren't working with this kind of power. Your one-stop shop for all of your banking and investment needs from checking to savings to IRAs is Morgan Federal Bank, 321 Einstein Street, Morgan Federal Bank. There's a difference, member FDIC, equal housing lender. I think that's Patrick Frederick. No, he's wearing 68. No wonder. I don't have a 68 on my roster. That's why I couldn't pass a low line drive. And it's fielded at the 32-yard line by Hanson, running to his left of the 30. Has a seam to the outside of the 35. Breaks out of a tackle. And he's down at around the 36, maybe the 37-yard line, a return of 15 with 28 seconds to go before the break. And the beat diggers down by what is a sweet 16 for Platte Valley going to be up to the diggers now to, to make sure that they, they just uh, don't cough that football up and give Todd Valley a chance to, to you know, go up, you know, that third touchdown. But more importantly, and or maybe not more importantly, but just as importantly, we have to try to get a, you know, maybe a first down here and get some offense rolling before they go into halftime. They can kind of judge what they're doing and see what, what's going to work as they come out in the second half and, and make a run at these Broncos. Well, they had the offense rolling with those three first downs on that drive and then fumbled into the 31 when they were only down 6 nothing. And every time Brush starts to do something good, they make a critical mistake. And that's what's happened in the second quarter after a scoreless first quarter. And it's first and 10 for the Bee Diggers just outside their own 37. They've got one timeout remaining in the opening half. Hanson is the receiver to the left, and Kukas will hand it off and running hard right up the gut is Connor Weiser. But he stood up after a gain of four to the 41-yard line. And there is a timeout called by the Bee Diggers, I believe. Ryan Smith makes the tackle. No, Platte Valley calls a timeout with 20 seconds to go. They do have two more timeouts remaining, so they're not conceding for just a 16 nothing result here in the opening half. They're trying to expand upon it, but they they cannot allow a first down here on this Bee Digger possession. Right, I think they're a little shocked that Brush came out and ran the football there because they had all those defensive backs back, and that's something that they haven't had but a couple of times during the game. You can bet these Platte Valley coaches, they, they had to throw that timeout out there just because they want to get that ball back, like you said. Well, one thing's for sure, Dave, the beat diggers can play with Platte Valley. I mean, this was a scoreless game for a while, but you just can't beat yourself like that. Right, and, you know, that's been kind of the, the tail of the tape for the diggers in every game they've played this year where, you know, just a few errors, just a penalty here and a turnover there it just really cost them. Second down and six from their own 41-yard line. Well, it looks like a receiver might be offside for the beat diggers, but no call there. Kukas back to throw. Looks, sets up, pressure down the middle. He's it up the middle. That ball is going to be incomplete. Intended for Hanson, but thrown to the outside shoulder where Sterling Zender was defending at the Platte Valley 34. Third down and six with 14 seconds to go before the break. And if the beat diggers take up enough time, even if they throw another pass here, not that they'd go for it on fourth down because they wouldn't, but if they just snap it for a punt and get the punt off and even punt it out of bounds, Platte Valley cannot run an offensive play. Right, and that's exactly something that we need. From the 41, the beat diggers on their own side of the field, third down and six, trailing 16 to nothing. Why is it the Set back, Kukas to throw, heaves it up the left sideline. Man is out there, but it's for Platte Valley intercepted by Sterling Sender. It looked like he was the intended receiver. Shea Hansen was the closest beat digger at the 42-yard line of Platte Valley. So Platte Valley, with seven seconds to go, has the football just outside their own 42. I'd have to expect some razzle-dazzle at this point. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, I think uh, Jordan Smith's shown that he has the arm to put that ball down the field, you know, 30, 35 yards. And accurately, so if, if he does throw it deep, it's going to take a, you know, not just a completed pass, but a, a real good run after that. Well, five from, five turnovers in this game, three by Brush and two by Platte Valley. Two receivers to the left and right. Seven seconds to go, more than likely the final play of the opening half from a shotgun. Smith back to throw. Pressure is coming. He gets out of it, rolls to his right, sets up, heaves it up the right sideline, wide open in center. It is caught at the 10 yard line, but he's down at the eight. And that is the end of the opening half of blown coverage, but it's a gain of 50 before the tackle was made along the far sideline. Brandon Rutherford was out there, as was Derek Lynch and Bruce Melendez. 
The Beat Diggers were burned badly, but thankfully for them, there was no time left in the opening half. With a score, Platte Valley 16 brush nothing on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com.